Hi Reefers, welcome back to another video from myself. Today we're going to go through the equipment that I'm currently running on my Red Sea Reefer 425XL and that will also include my DIY spillway that's reducing the amount of debris that's getting into the filter cups. If you want to see that, stick around. See you in a minute. Okay then, so as mentioned, we're going to go through the equipment. Now starting from the top, we've got the TMC V2 Illuminaire 900. That's hanging from the Evolution Aqua 1200 bracket. Coming down a bit further, we've got the two Tetra Auto Feeders. Now one of them on the left there will do pellets. That's once a day in the afternoon. The other one just behind me will do flake and that does that twice a day. So that's once in the morning and once in the evening. And then obviously on top of that, I've got all the usual frozen cubes uh, and all the special bits and pieces that we're feeding Piney, the porcupine puffer. As you can probably see some debris from last night's feed down in the bottom left there. Uh, coming down a bit further, we've got the Jebawa um, Crossflow. That's the 120, I believe it was. Uh, and that's uh, creating all the flow that I need around the tank for the time being. Maybe eventually we'll add a second one over on the right hand side. Um, I've also got inside the tank uh, a heat app that's rated at 300 watts and there's another one rated at 200 watts in the sump. Fan, six fan head on the top here and also a four fan head again in the sump and that's all ran by the Simply Acrea uh, temperature control unit um, and I'll explain re my reasons why I've got the heater in the tank and one in the sump in a minute but the actual temperature sensor is just down over on the right hand side again the reasons really for this is because if the return pump ever failed obviously the water is going to slightly go down in the tank itself uh, the unit, or I should say the temperature sensor, is in the tank to maintain the temperature. So if it needs to put a bit more heat in, then there's a heater in there to be able to do that. If it needs to cool it down, there's a fan on the top to do that as well. It doesn't really matter what's happening in the sump, although there is again a heater and a, and a, a fan in there anyway. But it's more about the tank because this is obviously where all the livestock is. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll take you off the tripod uh, and we'll have a look at the equipment that's in the sump and then all of the control panels that I've got down on the right hand side that's in a separate little cupboard. Okay, down where all the equipment is, as you can see, I've still got the original Red Sea Reefer pipe work. That includes the Red Sea uh, valve as well. And as you'll know, there's two drains, one standard, uh, and then you've also got the emergency. Now that runs down into the first little chamber, and then that will go over into where the four um, filter cups are. And that is actually where my DIY spillway is. So I'm gonna take you in for a little bit of a closer look, but what you will see is if I remove this, so underneath this bit of filter floss that's laying flat across the top of the cups, to make it lay flat across the cups, I've actually just got um, some egg crate under there. So if I remove this completely and the egg crate all at the same time, it just slides out and it's cut so that I can then lift it out completely. Obviously, as and when I need to change that filter floss, which is uh, pretty soon. Um, and then I've got the overflow or the spillway just there. Now it does quieten it down quite a lot as well, having the filter floss on the top. But the idea is the water comes obviously down through the pipework. It comes into this first chamber here. And as it comes up, I don't know how easy you can see, but I've actually managed to get um, some uh, plastic uh, in here which then kind of bends up and over nicely, which creates that nice little spillway. Now it does definitely reduce the amount of debris that goes into the actual cups. Um, so if I just put this back on, cause that will quieten it down again. And as I say, that will go on there and then it just slides then 
underneath and as you can see as the debris comes onto the top of the filter floss it will gradually get worse and worse and worse all the way across the top and once it gets to about the edge here uh, that's when I replace it um, and as I say it definitely helps and reduces the amount of debris that's uh, caught in the actual filter cups itself. Now the filter cups are easy to remove if you're not sure with Red Sea but this tray slides out uh, and then you can remove the cups accordingly to replace your filter floss. Uh, next up we've got the Bubble Magnus Magus uh, Curve 7. Again, I've got that turned off currently at the moment just because it's a little bit too noisy when I'm in here doing any sort of filming. Um, that's the only thing that's in that section. Uh, it's literally just the skimmer. There's nothing else in there. The next one as the water falls through the little slots. That's where the refugium is. In the refugium, I have Cheeto and what's running or growing the Cheeto is a Tunzi Eco LED proper refugium one so that's like the the purpley kind of red color that you get from it and there's a little bit of live rock in the bottom there as well so that's where the second heater is which is the Fluval digital uh, 200 watt that I've got down in the sump there um, the water will then cascade over goes onto or through a sponge um, that's at the very back just over here so the black sponge is in there uh, and it goes actually underneath the next section and that comes into the return chamber uh, now in the return chamber I've got the J Bauer 4000 litre per hour pump that's running the manifold up in the top left hand side of the cabinet as you can see up there and then from the manifold I've got the two reactors that's on the back wall left hand side one is running the rower foss and the one on the right has got the nitrate pearls in also in the return chamber i have the j bauer um, mdc i think it is the mdc 10,000. that's a sine wave um 10, liter per hour and that's my return pump uh, that's currently dialed down to probably about 40 45 percent so it's nowhere near using the the maximum amount um, it would probably be too powerful anyway for this tank but i'd like to buy and oversize the equipment so that it doesn't have to run as hard uh, also in the return chamber i've got uh, a marine pure bio filter plate as well um, so that's also helping with nitrate control as well as see that Cheeto and the nitrate pearls. Uh, you'll notice on the back I've got the two floats, uh, the two float sensors. Uh, that is the level keeper from Reef Factory. So that's currently maintaining the automatic top up. Uh, and over on the right hand side of the sump in the other door is where the 45 litre I've upgraded it from the original one that came with Red Sea because that one sits on the top of the sump and you can slide it left and right to sort of move it out of your way but you know it just takes up so much room that I originally had it down here where this one is um, but again it only holds like 12 litres so uh, you know if you go away on holiday for a couple of weeks it's just not enough so I've upgraded it to this one which is a 45 litre uh, tank um, bought my own pump which is at the very back left hand side and then that's all connected and runs the auto top up as I say from uh, Reef Factory. Just above the RO tank we've got the Jabawa forehead auto dosing unit and the auto dosing unit is dosing in the KH and there's also um, the chemical on the right hand side and that's another nitrate uh, control measure so just a, a couple of mil of that a day goes into the tank um, just as an additional it's currently my nitrates are running at around about 25 parts per million and that's mostly to do with piney um, with his food that he has uh, you know obviously it just uh, creates a little bit of extra nitrate to what you know most people probably run in their tank 
um, but I've only got sort of softies in the tank at the moment so and that's probably where we'll be staying is with the softies anyway so a little bit of extra nitrate you know won't really hurt them too much uh, on the left hand side of the auto doser I've actually got a 12 volt uh, bench unit and that's linked up to a caravan uh, water pump so that's just down here in this little in this little cup here if I can take it out I will there we go so just a little 12 volt caravan pump as I say that's connected to that bench unit there and all I do is when I want to top up the RO tank is uh, just bring in the 25 litre container pop the hose onto the end of that little pump and uh, pop it in the container goes right through the little hole at the top so that's perfect size and then that tops up the RO unit up on the back wall I've got a pH and salinity monitor as just one I bought uh, I think it was a Chinese unit to be fair um, obviously not expecting much from it but uh, it does seem to actually work to be fair um, it is a USB powered one so you don't have to worry about you know, running it through different plugs to get it to, to marry up with the three pin UK socket. Um, it's just USB port, so that's very helpful. And that uh, just sort of tells me roughly what my salinity is now. You know, as I say, it does do a pretty good job. Every now and again, I do need to move the probe, which is obviously in the sump, um, and, uh, and it will kind of almost like reset itself. But it always seems to be you know, pretty much on par with what my refractor meter is telling me, um, around about that 34. Uh, so even if it's even if it's out, at least it's consistently out, um, and I can take that into account. Uh, so if I come in here one day and I look at it and it's like 31, then that's going to raise my concerns, and I will then start to bring my own refractor meter in and give it a double check. Um, there's also the pH, as I say, monitor on the right-hand side of that uh, digital display. Um, and that's all being calibrated. It didn't come with any calibration fluid, but I bought the 4 and the 7, I think, uh, to calibrate it correctly. So, And again, that seems to be doing quite well, considering I wasn't really, as I say, holding out much hope with that. But it does do a pretty good job. Um, just up to the left of that is the control panel for the Crossflow, the uh, SCP120. And uh, as I say, quite easily sort of reach in there and press feed as and when I need to sort of turn that off. And um, we've also got the double socket at the top there, which has both the fans plugged into it. Uh, so that's the six head one, as well as the four head one that's in the sump itself. Right then, so if I bring you around now to the cabinet that I've got on the right hand side of the tank. Now I am running a Senai unit uh, in the actual weir section of the top of the tank and it's right at the very top. And the reason for that is, again, it's another redundancy. Uh, if the return pump should ever fail, the water in the tank, as I said before, will reduce down slightly going obviously into the sump and because the Senai is at the very very top of the weir the overflow box um, it comes out it goes out of water so and as soon as it goes out of water I will then get a notification on my phone to tell me um, which I can then obviously find out what's gone on um, and then I can sort it out hopefully from there with the J Bauer MDC pump I'm actually able to go onto the app uh, from anywhere in the world find out what's going on with it you know can I turn it back on um, is it on feed mode for whatever reason you know have we had a power cut all those sort of things now my Senai is actually running through the laptop which is just down there that laptop is permanently on never turns itself off uh, it's obviously in the closed position because I've got the monitor stood on top of it and on the screen at the top half, I've got the Senai, which is always giving me the graph for the temperature. And then at the bottom, 
I've got the level keeper for the auto top up and again that's always given me the graph as to what's going in every hour across the day. So coming down underneath the cupboard now we've got the section here we've got the temperature controller I'll just get it here we go we've got the temperature controller that's simply Acrea that's currently uh, obviously monitoring temperature and we'll either turn the heater on or turn the fans on depending on whatever it needs to do um coming down from that on the right hand side this one here is for the the main return pump as you can see on there mdc 10,000 to the left is an old jabawa power head i think it was an rw8 um, that broke down and the control panel is still stuck to the back but it's not actually doing anything and then the very very bottom We've got on the right hand side the level keeper so that's sorting out the auto top up and you can see the light on the top tells me that it's on and it's doing what it needs to be doing again with the app on that you can get onto the app wherever you are in the world and uh, and see how it's been performing throughout the day how much water it's been putting into the tank and then to the left of that is the J Bauer controller for the 4,000 litre per hour pump that's running the manifold, uh, which in turn, as you know, is running the reactors. So I've got the control for that down there. So that's all in the little control panel that's uh, to the right hand side of the tank. I can bring you back out and you can see it sort of down there. And it's got the monitor and the laptop and everything on the top. Um, now, also, another little piece of equipment. That I've just recently got, which was um, Father's Day present actually. One of them from my daughters is the orange filter. Um, well, it certainly came with an orange. It also came with a couple of other colours and a, and a macro one as well. But if I can just uh, get you looking at the tank like so, and that's just with the normal lights on, normal camera. And then as soon as I put the orange filter over the top, Look at that. Look at the difference. That's excellent. So that's really good. Really pleased with that. That's going to make such a difference when I go back into um, my local fish shop and, uh, you know, do another little tour around there, looking at the corals that they've got. This orange filter is really going to intensify the colours of their corals that they've got. So that's pretty much it, really, for today. Just wanted to go through the equipment. Um, as I say, that's running on my tank. Uh, if you have any comments um, for any of the equipment that I've got, why am I why am I running that equipment? Why don't I run this? Um, how did I do that DIY spillway? You know, any questions on that at all, please drop them in the comment section below. If you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I do put out a video every week at the weekend, generally Saturday morning, but certainly every week a video will go out um, with any updates of equipment or livestock um, or whatever it might be really. I'm also um, doing some more how-tos as well, so I'm trying to get the how-to videos um, up and running. I've got a few already on the channel um, which you can go and find uh, which might very well help you out. So that's pretty much it from me today. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks very much to my new subscribers uh, and for obviously my existing subscribers. And I will see you next week. Bye for now.